I think we'll try to get this power supply in the case and energized today, if not tested. So, the case, top and bottom, this happens to be the top, has all this garbage in it. I intend to clean this out, top and bottom, wipe it clean so we can proceed to install the components. Here's the transformer I intend to use. Actually, I'm going to use two of these. And even though I cleaned out the bottom, I will clean out the top. This transformer is just a tiny bit too high to fit inside the case. It's just a teeny, teeny bit higher. It would have been nice to mount the two transformers like this and this. So I think I'm going to have to mount them flat. I can't cover up this screw hole. Holds the case together. But I could mount them like this. There's nothing back here, and I'll use insulated terminals here on the IEC connector. In order to do the uh, horizontal mounting, I'll call that horizontal, I'm going to lose this piece of metal, this uh, wrap around piece of metal with two holes in it. I'm just going to take it off. go. Dislodge this one. We'll just take this off. Now it's, it's been glued or lacquered to the laminations of the transformer. So we'll look what I'm left with. Four through holes. If you happen to watch my ridiculously long recent mail video, I think you remember I, I opened the package and had these screws in it. Four, six, seven, four, five. So I'm going to set aside eight of these screws and mount it vertically. They will look like this, maybe just a little bit down. Case transform will set on the floor of the case. So what I'm going to put is a nut here against the head sandwiching the floor of the case. Then I'll, I'll put a nut here on all four screws. That'll be lifting the transformer slightly off the bottom of the case. Lock washer. Lock washer here and a nut here. The nuts will sandwich the laminations together. This will act as a spacer to bring it up off the bottom of the case. And actually, these eight screws should act to stiffen the bottom of the case. So this case, the upper and lower clamshell halves, top and bottom, are spaced apart 
by this side wall and by some removable spacers. Now these fit on the bottom but they're here and and they're used to achieve different thicknesses. Well I've, I've got to clear all this crap over here because that's where the bolt passes through to fasten the case together. So I'm going to set the transformer in here. Fairly, I'm going to leave a little bit of clearance. And I'm just going by eye. I'll take a transfer punch. And in case you missed this, this is a, these are these this particular set are drill diameters. They're, they're drill blanks. They've never been made into drills that have a point on the end. They're not really sharp. So I mean I can't use them as a true center punch. I'm going to put the transfer punch in what looks as a, like a good location. That'll give me a reference hole. A reference mark. See where there I can find it. There it is. So here's my first mounting screw. Passes of course through the bottom of the enclosure. Put a self-locking nut on the bottom. Slide our transformer down over it. Now initially when we slide these screws in, we want to try to be centered more or less in the hole because we could probably peel off a lamination. Now it wouldn't hurt to just stick it back on, but so assuming that this is a good enough location, and I'm just going to do this by eye. Okay, the transfer punch went through that one. And it goes through that one. I hate to try to force it for the same reason as I talked about the screws. I have to get a smaller transfer punch. I'm not going to risk delaminating. Is that a word? The transformer. I've got three of the bolts in, secured with locking washers. I got a nut and an internally toothed washer. And I've adjusted all the washers to be a half inch above the deck. Doesn't really matter what it is. Just make it equal. And hopefully this will fit. Should have tried this before I turned the camera on. We got a little low one there. We can just raise it up. So I think that will be all right. Look across here. Oh yeah. In any event, you get the gist. What I'll do is finish this hole and then I'll do the same thing to this transformer here. I'll make it as even as I can and we'll proceed to wire up the power circuit. I'm going to mount the transformers in their final position. I did want to say before I did that I drilled some ventilation holes well, that's, um, and, and like any good ventilation hole, I chamfered the edges nice and smooth, top and bottom. Transformers are mounted. The little circuit board is mounted. Now, it'll mount four different ways. I don't think you can mount it on a diagonal. 
and I fluffed it around and thought about it. I think this is the best way to mount it, except it does put this heat sink right next to, not touching, but next to the transformers. These two wires, let's forget about them. And this little red, red and black wire. What I've done is this gray wire. And there's two of them connected to this one. And one here, and the second one continues to here. This continues on, which I'll carry to the front panel to ground the power switch of mounting nut. And of course, this is the ground terminal on the IEC connector. The other two black wires from the transformer, not this one, not that one, go through this little piece of heat shrink and are connected together on this terminal, which is the neutral terminal or in the United States it would be the white wire, but in Europe I guess it's the maybe blue wire. Now I, I, I double nutted this, put a internally toothed washer on it, and it's generally accepted in most jurisdictions that grounding conductors be connected, or maybe even spliced if that's allowed, with pressure terminals. They're not... Um, for connections and splices, solder terminals are generally not accepted because of the fact they may melt under fault conditions and come apart. So I'm, these are all crimped, mechanically crimped terminals. And if you're going to use crimped terminals, which is I think a good idea, I strongly suggest getting one of these controlled force devices. They make them for insulated and uninsulated terminals, and the color of the insulation for those terminals or insulated are shown here. And this forces you, be, once you begin to close the jaw, the jaw will not open, well, you can override this, but now just closing it empty, that is without a terminal in it. I don't know that I can do it any... there we go. It's quite a bit of force, quite a bit of force, and there's a leverage multiplier here, force multiplying lever. If this is uh, a controlled amount of force, this is almost unachievable with a simple pliers type device. The uh, splice is, is, the crimp is a dual crimp. Space is, a, is a preset by the dies. Now I have some wire management to figure out here. And of course before I connect these transformers in parallel, I've already connected the primary in parallel. I need to uh, phase these secondary wires. Well, here's the power supply done and running. As best I could, I dressed the wires up. Some of them, though, I didn't want to cut, so they ended up being longer than I need to be. All the connections to the little board are made with plugs or jumpers so that I can replace the board at a later date. Fans are running. I don't have the lid on yet <laughs> and the fans are loose on the back panel. But you see there's the uh, voltage control. There's a load switch here. 
I checked it does turn on the load. I can also short out the terminals and adjust the current. So if I only want to supply say 2 amps, there we go. The green LED is on, which we'll turn it off here. Because of course once you short the output it's in the constant current mode. And I can get it up to 3 amps if I want. It's falling apart on me. <laughs> And I haven't been up here before, but I think I can get it to 30 volts. So there we go. These transformers are rated 2 amps a piece. So I should have lots of margin there. Uh, there's been no load on it. I'll have to put a load on it after I put put the top on. I intend to drill two rows of holes down the side of the top cover. Hopefully the holes drilled underneath the transformers will help cool it. And what I'll try to do is stick a thermocouple in here somewhere. I can just, all I have to do to cause this to get hot would be to, to uh, turn the load switch to uh, to the set position. It's set at 3 amps, so we have 3 amps right now. And, I, well this is uh, not hot. But there is a little bit of heat there. I mean, not enough certainly to, but I can feel the heat sink. Well, I can barely feel the heat sink. I will uh, put the cover on. And uh, I'll do another video where we just, I'll do some time lapse, let it run, have a thermocouple here and there, and we can see what's happening. It seemed as if I would never get done. I actually had a bad switch here. It was actually an American made switch, which is why these handles don't match any longer. So I'll do one more part and hopefully set this away unless I want to make some mods to this board. I'll put some links in there. There's a huge amount of discussion about ways to improve this power supply, uh, including replacing these integrated circuits with units having a higher withstand voltage. But I wanted to finish this completely as delivered from China. Well, thank you very much, and I uh, hope you stop back.